the Wesley's mob. Regret as we may the multiplied sects of Christendom, we must look upon them all with sympathy. The establishment of each marked a further endeavor to get nearer to God and the true light. The Wesleys returned to the simplicity of the early church in preaching, class gatherings, Bible study, etc. Naturally, they were opposed by churchianity. Cattle were driven amongst the worshippers to interrupt their meetings. They were mobbed. Similarly, Baptists, Presbyterians, and others have had their experiences of persecution, hindering Bible study and worshipping of God according to their consciences. What manner of persons ought we to be? As we note the bitter persecutions of the past and the narrow way of all who follow Jesus only, we should the more forgive arrogance and bigotry. All should turn away from human tradition and everything contrary to the Bible. Christian people in all denominations are reaching this conclusion and studying God's word without creedal spectacles in Bible classes or in their homes. Wesley uncovered another precious Bible truth. He declared Calvin's doctrine impossible for his acceptance, as Calvinists now do. Brother Wesley's theme was free grace, and his favorite text, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and whosoever will may come and take of the water of life freely. His heart was broad and loving, but the real breadth of grace divine was not then seen. He did not discern that his beautiful text relates to the blessing of the non-elect during Messiah's reign, that the church will not become the bride until the marriage at our Lord's second coming. Soon after, the spirit and the bride will bid all mankind partake of life everlasting. Now we see the connecting link between election and free grace. God's election of a saintly kingdom class is the work of this age. The elect in glory will in the next age extend God's free grace to all. Uh -huh.